day two. First one in the show place. I was the last one here. First one here today. We had a great day yesterday. We sold a ton of everything. Booth was packed. The whole show was packed. Um, the seminar rooms were full. The seminars were all really good. I did one of the best seminars that I've ever done yesterday on turning EVA. Uh, here's some of the rods that we have at the booth here. These here are from James Spike. And I'm gonna go show everybody's rods here because they've they're just unbelievable amount of artwork on these rods by some awesome people here. All these guys here stepped up so much and made the booth, the NURBS booth, such a success yesterday. And you see the volume of high quality work here is really, really amazing. This is some, some of James stuff looks like window pane stuff in this. He's a direct, um, directly influenced by Mike Joyce because Mike Joyce's stuff looks similar to this here. Here's some of Matt Moran's stuff. He's got a lot of compliments on his grips, the way he shaped them. They look three dimensional when you look into them because of the wood grain EVA, which I usually hate. And Matt's thread work is really, really top notch. You can see these are the aqua shade pack and the charcoal shade pack. Some more of his work here. This is a big 3D star. Uh, some more of Matt's stuff. Matt helped me yesterday with my seminar. He did a great job with me, even though I caught him off guard. Uh, here's Chase Fredericks and Anthony Fredericks rods here in the back. Uh, they're from Kentucky. They've been coming to the NURBS gatherings for a while. And you see these guys have picked everything that we do up. This UK rod is absolutely sick. There's basketballs in the deck wrap. They did checkerboards in my house at the workshop last year in a UK overlay. There was also a baseball rod that was entered in the mud hole contest. And this was this in the American Tackle um, Challenge. This rod here has a Mike Joyce style uh, chevron underneath, a chevron elongated wild threads going all over the place. And Chase is doing some stabilized wood. He's, we, we told it, we sold a ton of his stuff. We sold like $1,100 of his stuff yesterday here. It looked that good. This booth, this pier is done by Vinny. Vinny helped set up the booth yesterday. This is uh, something we did at a workshop together. I don't know who did this tartan. Um, actually, I do, because we have these bios up here. And this is Bob Harisco's. Bob recently did this tartan here. And you see Grumpy's Tackle, where, where Bob works. And Grumpy himself is here. And Grumpy lets us do a workshop at his shop in Seaside, New Jersey. This is Bob's 802, a 732 Rod Geeks XC. This rod here is absolutely gorgeous, and they all are, but this one here with the birch bark and the elliptical and the cork with some diamonds and this wood grain Matagi seat. It's just absolutely gorgeous rods. Um, here's another one that he recently did, a rose wrap with a breast cancer symbol in the foregrip. Bob did all of this here himself. Uh, this is this one here. Oh, here's another one up here from Grumpy's that, that, that Bob did. And it's a sparkler. This here is a before and after NURBS. This is John Crumlish's work. John's been posting a lot on the NURBS page. You can see before NURBS, he really sucked and didn't know what the hell he was doing. His epoxy was atrocious. His wraps sucked, but come to the NURBS gathering for one year, and this is what he is doing. And you can see the difference pre NURBS and post NURBS. Um, unbelievable how much time he's put in and effort into his craft. Here, I don't know whose these rods are here. We don't put labels on our rods, so it kind of makes it tough to figure out who did what, but these are Joe DeSantos, tomato pie Joes, a couple of spiders and ellipticals, and simple grips that we made at a couple of workshops. Here's a surf rod, another spider. These here are done by Davin, Joe's nephew, and these are, his grips are unbelievable. These are 360 overlays, and they go all the way around in the back grips as well. And you can see they kind of trick your eyes. And these ones here are just crazy. This pattern, this tribal pattern that he did. And it 360 all the way around the rod like a tattoo. And Davin's thread work is absolutely fantastic as everybody's is here. Here's a scale wrap that he did. This one here is a big pinwheel. Um, he's another carpenter like Mark Berry. And it's just unbelievable the work these guys are doing here. Um, I'm going to come over to this rack here. These are Jason Graham's rods. Jason's fish, Jason's fish the crap out of this one. I fish with Jason every day in the summer, and he beats the crap out of the rods. This is a, this is a snowflake that he did, a chevron grip. 
Uh, this one here, he came with to the show last year. He did a Matagi marbled seat, which is usually not allowed at NURBS gatherings, but he, he trimmed it with acrylic and made it look really good. Um, did a double wrap on it, one between, one between the back grip and one between the split grip. His rods look really good. This one back here, these, these three or four rods here are Albert IEs. Uh, this one here is a Chevron with a metallic silver trim in between. It was his first deck wrap. And for number one, it's friggin' spot on. And Albert does very meticulous work. Uh, he doesn't really get into the wraps, but he has done a lot of grips. And he's called the executive because his rods look like they belong to be owned by an executive. Uh, this one here is his grips, the graffiti grips that we made together. It actually says his name in Wild Style Graffiti, Albert IE. And he did a nice simple job with the wrap here. The rods are extremely clean when the way he builds them. These here are Quincy Magoos. These are, again, influenced heavily by Mike Joyce in the wraps. They have a stained glass window look. Um, Quincy always cuts everything off. I'm glad to see he left a few on here for the show because they are absolutely stunning and there's been a ton of pictures taken of Quincy's rods and this one here is one of his cutoffs he's, there's pieces and stuff all over the place people are like what did he do that for why did he cut that off because he could do it again and do it better and this is a birch bark grip that he made uh, I'm gonna come over here these are Mike Garones and everybody knows Mike Mike posts a lot for a long time with the NURBS his work is top-notch in my opinion he's the best production rod builder in the world for artwork and the amount of styles that he's able to do at an extremely high level uh, his guide wraps are absolutely gorgeous and he always leave if you follow him you've seen these pictures before but if not and you've seen this for the first time it's just astonishing that there's this many rods in the racks that look like this here and it's just one after the other his feather inlays absolutely amazing he was featured on the cover of rod maker magazine last year uh, hopefully tom comes over here and takes some more photos of his work and mark's work and, and shares it with everybody in the rod building community that gets rod maker magazine which i highly recommend i've had i've been a subscriber to the magazine for a long time and i was contributing editor editor for a few years and i think i'm going to write a couple more articles for tom uh, again these are stabilized wooden birch bark grips and they just look really really amazing this one's a spiral checkerboard he cut each one of these rings like an idiot one piece at a time with that stupid jig um kind of the highlight of the show first time being here mark berry mark is unbelievably meticulous I mean, everybody knows his work by now um, birch bark stabilized wood in various cuts and angles and everything that he does is Really, I, I sit there and I, try, I go over with a fine tooth comb and I can't find anything wrong with anything on his rod. I'll spend, I spent 15 minutes in one of the seminars trying to si find something wrong with any of his rods. And there was nothing, not one thing out of alignment, not one thing, no gaps in his thread. And his thread work is extremely intricate. And he has not posted this rod yet here. This is a Blackfish rod on a 733 Rod Geeks. Uh, I did the grips for his customer. So it's a collaboration rod. It's a set of blackfish and, and a crab. And Mark just finished the wrap recently. Um, just showing off of the show for the first time. Here's his tick, <laughs> the round ass spider wrap. Um, other stuff here. Here's spiraling bricks. Right, here comes Tom. Tom's going to ruin my video by talking over me. Well. Morning, Tom. How you doing? Good. Get some. Gets in. Absolutely. There we go. Tom Kirkman's going to take some pictures for the magazine over here. He pointed not at my rods. I wonder why. Because I'm looking at Mark Berry's and they look so much better than mine. So my rack over here, um, my Kit Kat rod, which I fish. I actually kind of broke it a little bit. Uh, Swedish fish rod. My Cookie Monster rod has been getting a ton of comments from everybody walking around with the kids. And, you know, the rods just, my, my stuff really pops out and I look it on the video. This here is a hard eight rod that I did. It's the guy's boat name. He plays craps, I guess. And I did a deck wrap and I put some dice in the deck wrap. Matched with some wintergreen thread. And this is the brick rod that I built last year and the Southwest rod. So these here I've been posting before. This is the first time a lot of these people are seeing this stuff and they're just, they're like, holy shit. And in the back here, I have 
and one more the shaded rod the shaded grip with a it's a jellyfish wrap it was the first time I did this wrap here another pattern I designed these rods here are from Skip Donahue and his rods have been getting a ton of comments as well and not because they're on my rack because his work is top notch and his just he has like a Mike Joyce style to him as well and you, you can kind of see his, his stuff looks it just looks different it does not look like thread none of this stuff looks like thread but it just really looks like artwork specifically these two here just really amazing amazing work and this one here you know really bright and you see his various styles and his three rods sitting together and he, he does have some stabilized wood handles um, so over here is a rod Mike Garone did the feather inlays for me and I made the grips and Mike Joyce started to install them before he passed away so this is a collaboration rod between Mike Joyce and Mike Garone two guys that have done a lot for the NURBS uh, I, I actually wrapped the guy so the three of us built it this one here is Bernie Cohen did the grips, the World Trade Center grips. And Mike Joyce did the World Trade Center wrap. And you can see the towers got hit by the plane and one of the towers uh, actually fell here. It's just really, really amazing how, how he was, he just thought so far outside the box. This one here, everyone likes this one here because it's so different. Um, and that's just Mike Joyce's style. We have him here with us in, in with, with a lot of his work and I have some stuff in the back that I'll show you in a second. These here, this is Bernie Cohen's uh, grips and this is, the, this is how everything here got started with me through Bernie. He taught me how to be a, an artist really and just not be afraid of doing stuff that I felt like I wanted to do regardless of what anybody else said. And this is the Martinsville wrap and this is the wrap right here that changed uh, deck wraps. This really opened up everything to everybody and what was possible because we, before we were doing plain stars and stuff and Mike just really blew that out of the water. Uh, another an important feature of what we have at the booth here is our Hall of Fame. And the Hall of Fame is basically the guys that have passed away. And here's Rich Schwartz, there's a couple of pictures. Here's Mike Joyce's obituary from his, um, his wake and you know, here's Bernie Cohen, Roy Carey. Steve Zayas, and it's me and Mike up in the top right, and me and Ed Ray. Uh, I don't have a picture of Bernie Zabinski or Mike Barkley, unfortunately. But uh, it me really means a lot to have this front and center in the, in the booth here. Well, even though I'm selling stuff here, this is really what the focus of the booth is, is for people to come in here and see what we are about. And that is pretty much what I got. I know it's a long video, but I hope you guys really appreciate The guys that didn't come to the show, make an effort to get here. Don't just say, yeah, I really want to go. Bullshit, you got a year. Start saving up now, making plans to come, because that's what we're going to do. We already have a list for next year and things we're going to change about the booth. What's up, Jason? Can you stand up for a second? I'm going to see I want to see the shirt. So the front shirt we got this year is a wizard drinking a glass of martini. We try to keep it classy. Real simple shirt. You prefer to turn around. And the back, we have always in our hearts, and it's actually always in our arts. And these are the guys that passed away. So, so we really we really tributed the guys that were here, and they're not, a lot, they're not able to be here anymore. Um, but they are here with us and Jason's done so much for me this year with the booth I can't thank him James Rose Vinny um, Mark Berry for making these amazing rod racks It's really been a collaboration to make the booth come together and look the way it did this year And I really appreciate it. So hopefully you guys enjoy this and we're getting ready to get set up for day two here